Hi there everybody, it's Helen from Slim and Stylish and I'm a Stamping Up UK independent demonstrator. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. I have got into trouble. <laughs> I'll tell you, I am in big trouble. I did a video for these two bags earlier in the week using the Cake Saray stamp set and the Sweet Saray paper, which I loved. And um, I said on the video that I didn't know anyone who was getting married this year. And I might have said it five or six times while racking my brain and thinking that no one was getting married this year. And I have received a text message from one of my friends who is watching it. And I do know someone who is <laughs> getting married this year. <laughs> And I'd forgotten it, so I'm in big trouble. Um, so today I have made a wedding product project with these products because honestly, I, I said it in the video before, I think these papers just lend so well to weddings and celebrations like that. So this one, this box, it's two inches, no, two and a half inches, I think it was, two and a half inches square, and it's three and a half inches tall. And it fits in this gorgeous little candle and on it it says wedding day so it would be brilliant to give as a wedding present or it'd be fantastic to receive as a wedding favour. And I cut a window so you could see the candle at the front and then I put a nice tag on the top and it's all glittery and shiny which is great because it's actually to play along with a blog hop today which is sparkle shimmer and shine so this paper shimmers and shines and now the tag sparkles and with the diamantes I thought it was perfect for that I'm going to show you how I made it and I'm also going to show you how I measured it um, I did a blog over Christmas and I showed everybody how I got to the measurements I got to and I got good feedback for it because people wanted to know so they could adjust it to what they're doing. So the way I've worked it, and I'll show you very quickly, this is how I do my workings out really. I just grab a piece of scrap paper, this is on the back of a, a to-do list shopping note thing, and I measure my jar. So when I measured it I noticed it was two and a half. So I needed four sides, so two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. And I needed a tab, which was about half an inch. So I worked out that I needed 10 and a half inches of cardstock on that side. And then I flip it and I measure my candle again. And I needed it to be three and a half inches tall because my candle is just over three and a quarter. So three and a half would have meant that it sits quite nicely in there with just a small gap at the top for the flaps. I know that my box is going to be two and a half inches wide so I need the bottom to be equal to what it is wide so that it sits like that together. So I've measured that out at the end and at the top I wanted it to be two and a half inches because then it would pull together and it would stand up. However, I'm using a4 paper in the UK which only goes to eight and one uh, eight and a quarter rather than eight and a half so this is just a quarter of an inch smaller than what I would have preferably liked it but I think it worked so that's how I did my working out but this is a great thing to have with you when you're using your score tool because then you can see exactly where you need to score and mark your paper so I'm going to get to showing you exactly how I did this now and I hope you enjoy. I'm just going to quickly apologise because I think you might have just jumped or I might have put a blank piece in there. Um, as I was talking to you about the measurements I realised I hadn't got anything handy. Um, I got the wrong colour cardstock so I rushed off to go and get that and I stopped the filming and I've just started again so I apologise if there was a jump but that's why. So now I have the paper that I was just mentioning to you. This is cut, this is eight and a quarter because it is our A4 measurement but I've cut it to ten and a half inches. So I'm just going to pull my scoring board up which I now know that I have near me with the right colour paper. I'm doing this in Marina Mist. I'm going to make both of them the same um, because I still have lots of this paper left over. The project didn't use much, so I thought I would do two the same. So from 
my measurements that you can see, you need to go two and a half all the way across. So two and a half. You actually need to move that out the way, otherwise I can't get all the way down. Five. Um, seven and a half. Seven and a half and ten. Okay. And then you want to turn your piece of paper round. And you want to do this again, but start with a two and a half. So that's the bottom. And then you want three and a half. So that's at six. And then that should just leave you with, with this one and a quarter, whatever is left at there, uh, two and a quarter, it will leave it for you quite easily. Don't put your scoreboard away because you will need it again. Um, you probably could score it now, but I get confused if I do. So leave it handy because you will need it. And go across and just fold and burnish all of the score lines. As we're doing this in card, you do need to properly burnish your score lines. You can't just get away with using your fingers like you can with DSP. And the reason we're doing it in card and not in DSP is because the candle is actually quite heavy so it's better to give it a proper card base so now you just get your snips and you want to snip in here to make this long rectangle here a tab so let's do that on both sides and then just get rid of these rectangles you don't need them and as I'm going up you'll notice I am just cutting up the side of the score line because I'm just gonna go at an angle join it up at the top like that and I'm going to do that on all of these score lines here just at the side of the score line and at the top it's just going to meet in the middle of the score line so you just get oh, I have done that really scaggy that's bad of me I'll go over that because I don't like it so you're just going to create that very slight tab there and you're going to do it on all of them. I'm going to work right to left because that always just feels easier for me. I don't know why. I don't know whether it's a, a right-handed thing. I'm, I'm not sure. Which way do you work? Do you work right to left? Huh? I don't know. It always feels a lot simpler for me if I go this way. So once you've got all of those done, you're just going to flip the card completely and do exactly the same at the top. So you're just going to cut that one off, okay, this one, and this one, and this one. those and bring your scoring tool back. I'll bring my scoreboard back. This time I want that last little bit, that two and a quarter, to be at the top. And where these fold in, I want that to be on the underneath. Okay, because this is going to fold out the other way. And what you need to do here, I'll explain to you why as well. If the top is two and a quarter, Let's change that two and a quarter but the whole of the box is two and a half you're going to want this to meet halfway so you want this bit here so two, half of two and a half is one and a quarter so you want this to be one and a quarter from this line which just leaves the inch I hope that's that's clear I'm, I realize I totally didn't make that, that clear so you just want to score on each of these at the one inch mark and then fold each one. You're not gonna keep each one, but you just wanna fold each one. It makes it a bit easier. Okay, while you've got your box unfolded and flat, you want four panels, and these are a quarter of an inch less. So where this was two and a half, this is two and a quarter, and where this was three and a half, this is three and a quarter. 
and I'm just going to use my snail with them because it is DSP going onto card, so that's okay. I'm going to put a few bits of snail on because I definitely want these to stick, especially as I'm going to do some punching on some of them. So just put that in the middle of the box. Okay. And you're going to come along with all of these and making sure they're all level and they all flow nicely. There you go. I do. I think this paper is is stunning. It really is. You've got to use it for special projects, haven't you, when you've got paper as pretty as this. So that's how my box is going to fold. Now because of the punch, I'm going to want to punch on this one. Am I? No, I'm going to want to punch on this one here. So that you can't see the flap. You want that hidden and you don't really want to see the join. So this will be where I do the punch in. So I'm gonna come in with the fancy label punch. And I totally just did this by, by viewing really. I just eyed up where I thought the middle of the box was. And I think the middle of the box is there. And just punch that out. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. And what you want to do is you want to just fold that and make sure that the flap you cannot see from the window, okay? So I can see it just there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my label punch and I'm just going to cut a little bit in the middle, just there. And I'm just going to double check that that works now. Yep, you can't see it now and it will just keep that flap out of the window. Okay, so as you just mock, ex mock assemble it and hold it, this one here and this one here you wanna keep because they will be the two that come in together for your box. These two here, you just wanna make shorter. So you wanna grab your scissors and you just want to chop them off just where that score line is because it'll fold better there we go and off so all you need to do now is assemble it so if you just grab your fast fuse and you will need your fast fuse now um because it's card and card and you're going to want this to hold those candles like i said are quite heavy you're just going to bring that in fuse up that Okay, make sure that's all folded in because you don't want the bottom side to be tacky. And just fold the box in on each other. It should fit perfectly like that. With these, you want this to be the last flap down so that the close is at the bottom. So you're going to put both of those side ones in, the back one and then the top. And to do that, I'm just going to run a couple of strips of fuse at the bottom there and bring that in together and then I always just grab my bone folder to make sure it's stuck tightly okay you want to put your candle in there you go so you can just see that it says wedding day and what type of candle it is at the bottom fold your tops over and that is in essence the start of your bag so you just want to grab a hole punch now and I've come in probably about a centimetre or half an inch and where I have thought it's in the middle, I haven't measured or marked this out at all, I've just gone to where I think is in the middle. Let's have a look. So it's about there and I'm just going to grab the white organiser ribbon, I love this organiser ribbon, um, there's been a few projects of mine and I know of other demonstrators where we've coloured the ribbon with the blends that just makes it even better for me because you don't need especially if you're new to joining 
you don't need to get hundreds of different types of ribbons straight away you can just get this one and a couple of blends or inks and you can just dye this ribbon to whichever color you need and it just matches so it's always a good thing to to put in if you are looking at joining go over to my blog there are all details celebration is a great time for buying products because you get free products but the best offer that they do at celebration is the joining offer because not only do you get 130 pounds for 99 pounds you also get two free stamp sets admittedly they're not the celebration stamp sets but you can get the high price stamp sets from in the catalogue there and it's a great deal i looked at one the other day for a customer and it was about 204 pounds worth of kit they got for their 99 pounds and if you think if you do that just as a celebration order you will get two free celebration sets but you get so much more if you join so I'd recommend that for anyone. My team's expanding. I'd love to see you on it. I'm happy to help you in any way. You don't even have to demonstrate. You can just join for the discounts and then leave if you wanted to. That's really up to you. So that's how I did the ribbon. I managed to get it to sit a little bit better, but I'm not going to play with that because I want to show you how I did the label. I don't want it to run into hours and hours worth of tutorial. I can be here for ages sometimes with ribbon. So I got the glimmer paper, which is the Myths and Magic glimmer paper, and the Starburst punch. So I'm just going to come in and punch that out. This glimmer paper comes in a green and a turquoise as well, because I was unsure whether to use the green. I know that sounds mad, blue and green should not be seen, but there's green in the leaves and there was green on the candle. So I was a little bit torn, but I did go with the the white in the end. You just want a piece of Marina Mist cardstock and with this you want to use the one and three quarter inch punch. Yeah, just checking that's what I used before. I can't remember. When I was looking at it I thought that looks a lot, a lot smaller than my circle. It does look a lot smaller than... Ignore me! Ignore it! You want to use a different punch. What punch do you want to use? You want to use a two inch punch on the Marina Mist. I knew that was too small. I will look. And I thought that was the same size. I must have dodgy eyes. You want two inches. I will go back over and tell you what all the sizes are. To make it easier, I'm just going to put that on there. That on there. <laughs> Kiddified. I'm going to make this easy for me. That's the label that I punched out that you want to keep. So you've got those. I'm just going to grab a scrap piece of Whisper White just here and I'm using the Petal Palette stamp set which is absolutely gorgeous and I've put it somewhere and Lord knows where I've put it, there it is. And I'm using this one here which says some things are just meant to be like the two of you together and I thought that was just a cute one for a wedding. I thought that was a really, really cute saying and I love the font on this set. Um, I've bought quite a few in the occasions catalogue but this set just has such gorgeous font now this stamp set I think it's two stamp sets and it's £32 um, and you get let me just oh, I've gone weak I've gone weak it's a new ink pad so I haven't used it that much so for the petal palette it's £32 and you get a one of two and a two of two and you can totally choose that as just one of your free stamp sets if you join. How great is that? So this is with the one and three quarters punch. Just punch that out like that. I haven't done that straight. I haven't done that straight at all. too busy showing you the bird stamp set <laughs> do it's a beautiful stamp set if you're watching any of my tutorials you'll think oh it's the only one she uses well it kind of is I like it the most there we go when we went to on stage someone said you should look at the products in the catalogue that don't sell themselves to you and those are the ones you should demonstrate because 
they're the ones that won't sell themselves well to everybody else. I don't agree. I want to play with the stuff I like. And I love this set. So you want your fast fuse again. I'm only using fast fuse because there's quite a lot that is going onto this tag. So for the tag, you want to bring the white one, which was with the one and three quarter punch. See, I'm getting the hang of this. And you're going to just stick this straight onto the everyday label punch. The, no, the pretty, this one, pretty label. What? The bubble, the cloud one. You want to put it on the cloud one. <laughs> I'm not doing well, am I? Stick that onto your marina mist circle, which is the two inch circle you're sticking it onto. There we go. Getting the hang of this label. Okay, and then you just want to put your fast fuse onto there and stick it onto your starburst. So you've got a gorgeous glitter tag. And the reason I work backwards by putting the fast fuse onto the smaller layer and then putting it onto the bigger one is if you put it on the bigger one and put the layer on top, you could get some gum around the side from where you've guessed wrong. So that's just an easier way of doing it. And then I'm just going to look at the top here and I'm just going to fast fuse at the top just a line so that when I stick it onto my box it doesn't get the stick on the inside and it just sticks it there. Okay, I'll move my punches out of the way and bring my other one back in. So these are the two boxes that I have made. Dimensionals, no, rhinestones, oh my gosh, rhinestones. It is not even late or early in the morning. It's middle of the day. I should be firing on all cylinders here and I am definitely not. Um, so I've just put some rhinestones on the top, which are just here. And I put three together, so there we go. Between not having the paper cut to the right size, getting all the circles mixed up wrong, telling you the cutting wrong, and not having the rhinestones, and then doing the stamping wrong. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where, what's going on. I don't think it's been a good tutorial, really. There we go. I've done that one a little bit curved, mainly because I stuck it in the wrong place, but I actually quite like it curved rather than the straight. Up to you, let me know. But that is my card for the blog hop that's today. Go over to my blog, um, the link is below. Find the blog hop and you'll have all of the other ladies, shimmery sparkle and shimmer sparkle and glitter, I think it was. So, no, it wasn't. It was shimmer sparkle and shine. Basically, it means glittery. And that's my blog hop for it. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully see you all again soon. Thanks.